Good afternoon. Thank you again so much for joining us this afternoon. We are very, very excited for you guys to experience LifeShare 2.0. And today we are going to do several different things, including showing you how to navigate in the new setup, how to add activities, publish your calendars, and add various other content, and also how to manage your resident and staff accounts. We're really excited to show you this because number one, it's definitely a nice, clean, updated look. Um, but number two, it's got much easier navigation. And we think you're going to find that a lot of the things that you're currently doing in LifeShare are very consistent with this new look and navigation. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in today. We are going to be keeping our webinar hopefully around about 25 minutes today because we know how busy you guys are. Um, so we're really just going to dive in and get started right away. And if you do have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to pop those in the chat box. We've got Lauren here with us today, and she's going to be helping to moderate the chat box as we're going through the different features today. So thank you again for joining us. Let's take our first look at LifeShare 2.0. When you first log in, this is what your home page is now going to look like. You're going to see your profile image in the upper left-hand corner if you choose to upload one. And then you're going to see your own settings. So you can manage messages, you've got a calendar here you could use, and also your own user settings. In the upper left-hand corner above your picture is the LifeShare logo. And that is always going to take you home. So you're going to see that on every single page that you're working in on LifeShare 2.0. And if you ever need to navigate back to your user homepage, you can simply do that by clicking the LifeShare logo in the corner. In the middle of your screen, you're going to see the community section. This shows you the different areas of campus that you have access to. So you may notice there are some icons here to help you now. The first two that have a bed are affiliated with a care unit. So if I look at the title that corresponds, this one is for my assisted living area of campus. This one would be for my memory care. And obviously you may have some other care units listed as well. Underneath that, we see the entire campus level and that is indicated by the building icon. If you are hoping to edit content in a specific care unit of campus, you can access that in a couple of different ways. You could click on the unit here. You can see my picture changed in the upper left hand corner and now instead of having my user information, it tells me that I'm working in Hoosier Homestead Assisted Living. Or you may also have noticed there's a pull down menu underneath your name. If you click on the arrow, you'll also see your units and areas of campus pop up here. So we could select one of those, and that would also take us to that unit homepage. That is also available. The community switcher, as we like to call it, is also going to be available on every single page that you're working on. Uh, so you can choose that if you would like to hop over to a different area of campus to enter content. On the right hand corner of your screen, you are going to see a day at a glance. Now, the one that's on your user homepage is going to give you a view of everything that's happening on your entire campus. So you can see we have some activities that are happening campus wide. We have some that are just happening for assisted living. You can click through to see the rest of the day's activities, and you can also choose a date by clicking on that date or by using the calendar tool. So now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to look at an individual unit. Um, most of the time, as you are entering content, you're probably going to want to do it at the unit level, unless it is something that does apply to your entire campus. So for our purposes today, I'm gonna to click into our assisted living unit and I used the community section in the middle, but again, I could have used my pull down bar to switch to that as well. And now, once I get to this screen, we see another day at a glance. So now the activities that I'm seeing, in addition to the menus, birthdays, and announcements, are all specific to assisted living. If there is an activity that's been inherited by the campus level, 
it will indicate that underneath the activity menu or even announcement if it was from a campus or a network level. You can see when I do that, I've got this little stop sign that pops up. When content is entered at the campus or network level, that's where it does have to be edited. Um, so because I'm at the unit level right now, I'm not able to go in and edit that information. Okay. Also on this page, you're gonna see the links that you should already be familiar with. A lot of those are gonna look familiar to you. Your activities, announcements, birthdays, all of those familiar things. But in addition, we have added some quick actions. Uh, so if you quickly wanted to be able to access adding a new activity, new menu, or a new announcement, you can click on those links and it's gonna take you right to that channel. The thing that we are most excited about with this um, is the preview slideshow button. So no more entering content and then walking out to your community share device to make sure it's displayed correctly. At the top of your unit homepage, you've got the preview slideshow button, which you can click. And it is gonna show you all of your slides for that day. So we are super excited to share this feature with you um, and hope that it's gonna make your lives a lot easier and less back and forth to check on those community share screens. You can navigate through these slides to double check all of your information. And another thing that I wanted you to note, uh, just like in the life share you're used, you're used to working with now, you do have the ability to select multiple backgrounds. And for this particular announcement, we did select a couple of different backgrounds. And you can see we have a new button that popped up here that's called Change Theme. If I click on that, I'm able to see the other background selection that I chose, and I can view how that's going to look on my community share slideshow. This is also going to show any pictures that you have uploaded. So we'll click here through these announcements and birthday slides and menus, but it is gonna show your pictures along with any captions that you may choose to add to those as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and dive into adding content. Um, and again, you're gonna find this is really pretty intuitive and really not that much different from what you're currently doing. So if I wanted to add a new activity for the day, I could click on my quick action link or I could go to my activities channel. Okay. And now I'm just gonna see a list of all of my daily activities. It's also going to house your monthly calendar links on the activity page, pretty much like before. You'll see you can navigate easily between the different days, or you can use the calendar tool again to select the day you wish to work on. We're gonna stay on today. But before we add a new activity, I wanted to draw your attention to a couple of different icons. When you see the arrows, that indicates that this activity has been set up as a repeating activity. If you see the little block of color, that indicates that it does have an activity type associated with it. If you see the bell, that indicates that a notification has been set for that activity. So anytime you wish to add a new activity, Instead of having that blue add button in the upper right hand corner, we kept the color the same, but it is on the left now and it says new activity. So we're gonna click into that. Here is where we would title our activity, just like always. We're gonna make sure our date is correct. I can change my time either by typing directly in this text box or selecting the clock tool to adjust the arrows. I can assign an activity type in this location as well. I don't want this to be excluded from my print and calendars, so we're gonna leave that as is. Here's where you have the option to set this activity as a repeating activity. So you can select your choices here and it would pop up with a few different options for you. We're gonna make this a one-time activity for our purposes. If you wished to send a reminder, you would enable this toggle by clicking it, now you can see it's green. So we are going to send a notification. We can set our time accordingly, however much time you'd like in advance. And we can choose to select a text message or a phone call. Then you have to choose whether you want to remind specific people on campus by clicking their names. If we decided, oops, I didn't wanna do that, we click on that name, 
and we can remove them. And instead, maybe we want to remind an entire community. Okay, so you can see some different custom communities that pop up there that you can choose to select and send that phone call notification. I'm going to disable that for our purposes today. Um, but then another new thing to you guys, you do have the ability now to select some different backgrounds for your activity slides. The activities will still be lumped together in your morning, afternoon, and evening activity slides, but if I choose this background, then you're gonna see this for the afternoon activities when they rotate through your menu. Um, maybe you still want some of them to appear on the cork board or the whiteboard here, so you could select that one as well. So you can select as many different backgrounds as you would like. And to preview these, you're going to click on the title of the background, and then you have two options. You can either preview to see what it's going to look like, or if you decide you don't care for that background, you can remove it. At the bottom of our screen, instead of having the check boxes like you used to, you do still have the ability to tag other communities, but you're going to do that instead by clicking Add More. So right now we have our activity, the board games activity, only assigned to AL. But if I would also like for that information to display on memory care, I simply click the checkbox and then I would click OK. One important thing that we want to note is that if you do select the campus level, it is automatically going to appear in the slideshow for all units at your campus. So if it is not a campus-wide activity, you do not want to select this box. You want to make sure that you select the units that will be participating in that activity. Once you're finished selecting, we'll choose OK. And now you can see those communities are both listed. And then I'm going to have just one more opportunity to scroll through, double check my information. And your Save button now is in the top right. So once we click Save, we're now going to see that information appear in our list of activities. You do still have the ability to print all of the same calendars by coming up here to the printed version. So we click on the pull down menu. We can still do our daily calendar. You may include a note if you wish. Then we're going to click the publish button. You can switch between dates there. Click on the link. And once you open the link, you do have the ability to download or print your daily PDF. Just as always, we can close out of that, go back to our activities channel, and we'll take a quick look at our weekly. It's gonna work just the same way, so I'm gonna skip publishing that for now so we can keep moving. But I did wanna show you the monthly calendars because there are some exciting new features with that as well. You do have the ability to title your calendar. And you still have the option to show activity types, or if you don't wish to do that, then you can deselect this toggle. I would like for the activity types to show, so I'm gonna leave that selected. I don't wish to hide start time, so I'm gonna leave this alone. But one thing that's a little bit different is instead of having your text boxes pop up that you can fill, you actually have a calendar view. So you can see July 1st began on a Monday. So we have one empty square on a Sunday. So I'm gonna click into that. And for that one, we're going to go ahead and enable the toggle that says show activity legend. So my activity legend is going to appear in the first empty square on the monthly calendar. I can then click on the second empty box. I could type the birthdays for the month here. I could click on the third one and type in whatever information I wish to appear in those different boxes. Okay, so you still have the ability to use those empty boxes. It is just a little more streamlined for you now. Once you have made all of those selections, you're gonna click your publish button and it's gonna pop up with our two links. We still have the one-sided and two-sided options for you, so nothing has changed with that. But once those links pop up, you are going to have the ability to view your calendar, whichever size you wish, or the whichever one-sided or two-sided you wish. So we can see a sneak peek at our calendar there.
Um, and the nice thing about these links is that they are still live links. So anytime you republish your calendar, this live link at the bottom is going to reflect the most recent version. All right, if you have any questions so far about adding activities or publishing calendars, then go ahead and pop those in the chat box for us. Hopefully you're finding this is pretty intuitive, not too different than what you're used to now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on then and just briefly look at the other channels available to you. So when you click on announcements, you are able to see where the announcement came from. So if it's something that was pushed out to the entire network, you're gonna be able to see that it was inherited from the network level. Or if it's something that was created at the campus level, it's going to indicate that on your announcements for you as well. So if you wish to create a new announcement, we'll click on that blue new announcement button. You've got the same options as always. You can include the name and then also whatever text you would like to display. This enabled button just indicates that you do want this to be actively showing in your slideshow. Um, the reason that you might choose to disable it is that if you had a slide that you use on a regular basis, um, you can go in, you can enable it when you want it to be shown, disable it for those times where you don't care for it to be shown. Um, so it's kind of a nice feature to use if you do have a slide that you come back to um, time and time again to use in your slideshow. You do have the option though, just as always, to include your display starting and display until dates. And there's also a nice pop-up message here at the bottom that's just going to clarify for you exactly when that announcement is going to begin showing and when it will end showing. So that's a nice feature. It kind of takes the guesswork out for you now. Here are your backgrounds. You've got all the same backgrounds available. Hopefully you'll find that it's a little easier to navigate through those than to have to keep scrolling on your current version of LifeShare. But just like we did for announcements, you're gonna select whatever backgrounds you wish to appear and they will pop up um, under your slideshow themes. You still have the ability to add a picture file to announcement by clicking an add button. And down here, you also have the ability, just like we talked about with announcements, to select whatever areas of campus you would like that information to display on. Menus are going to work in much the same manner. And I guess I did forget to say, I should have told you, always remember once you've entered that information, you are going to want to kind of scroll back up and be sure to click that blue save button. Um, it is in a different location, so just be sure that you remember to click save so that all of your hard work does not get deleted. All right, the next channel there, the menus. Um, this is gonna work in much the same way. You can see that this is a rotating menu indicated by the arrows. We can click new menu to add our new menu selections, set it up as a repeating menu if we wish. And you can also go into an existing menu and make any changes as needed. If you do decide to make a change, make sure you click that blue save button and it's gonna pop up with the same as you've seen now, only modify on this date or modify this in all future dates. We're gonna skip pictures and videos for just a minute and quickly go into birthdays and in memory. If you wanna add a new birthday, we simply click on that blue new birthday button. You're gonna enter the name, birth date, and then you can pick as many backgrounds as you choose. You also have the ability to add pictures and choose your areas of campus, followed by clicking that save button. In memory is going to work in exactly the same way. So nothing has changed with those. If you choose to add a custom slide, we would click on new custom slide. You can title it. This is just for your purposes, so you can kind of organize your custom slides a little bit better. You can use your display starting and until dates. It's got the same message that we noticed in announcements. And here's where you would select your image to upload, whether it be a PowerPoint file or a JPEG um, to display whatever custom information you would like to. You can also select your areas of campus at the bottom and then we'd click that blue save button for that custom slide. 
We'll go ahead and jump to therapeutic music now. You still see a list of all of your music programming that you have already scheduled. If you wish to go in and edit a playlist, you can click on it. You could change the time, the length of the program, the days for that program. You could even go in and select a different program if you choose. It's gonna have all of the same categories that you are used to in your current version of LifeShare. And you can also edit which areas of campus you would like that to display on. So if I did not want this to be at the campus level, if I wanted to select just individual units, I can click on it and I can remove that level easily. Click save to change or save any changes. And then I do the same to add a new program. Click new program, name that program whatever you'd like. Choose your program. Don't forget to include a start time. And then you can select how long you would like that playlist to last. And that's gonna be up to two hours. Choose your days, areas of campus, pretty easy to do. All right, so we'll go ahead and hop into that pictures and videos channel. Um, we are really excited about this. Uh, you're gonna have the ability to create new albums much like you would on social media. So we could click new album. You would name your album here select your start and end dates uh, for that album to appear in your slideshow. If you choose to upload a video, just remember that the video is going to adopt the same start and end dates as the rest of the album. So that is something that's a little bit different um, because you before you added your videos in a separate channel, but now they are listed together. So we'd save our album and we're gonna go back and click into an existing album. So you can see what that's gonna look like. Uh, you've got the option at the top to add more pictures, or if it's a new album, then you would begin by adding some pictures. You can add a video file from your computer, and you still have the ability to add YouTube videos as well. If you wish to go in and edit an existing album, we're gonna click into that again. I can click on the pull down menu and I can go in and I can edit any information, including my start and end dates and areas of campus, as well as showing this in the slideshow or not. Um, so if it's an album that I no longer want to be showing in the slideshow, I can simply click this toggle, click save, and it would no longer appear in my community share slideshow. If you have any questions about pictures and videos, let us know. You can see that album disappeared. It is now a hidden album since we removed it from our slideshow. So we can click on show hidden or hide hidden to access those. And this is actually at the top a file that's gonna hold all of your campus pictures. Um, so when you click in on there, you should be able to see all of the pictures that are active. I just removed our active album. Uh, so we have to click show hidden in order to see those there. Okay. The final thing that you have at the bottom is going to be the settings channel. And here you have access to your contact information. So you can edit your address, your phone number, you can add your website so that it appears on the mobile app, um, a few different options there. But one of the things we're really excited about is you also have the ability to control your slideshow settings. So the number of days this type of content appears, um, whether or not you want the this day in history slide and some other features there that you can definitely play around with or let support know if you have any questions. Here's where you would access your mobile access pen. So you do still have that channel. Uh, you also still have your weather channel. So those things have all been kind of lumped together into the settings channel. And then also you have your branding channel. So if you chose to upload a picture of your campus here, or maybe your logo, you do have the ability to do that. But please remember that our support staff is always willing and able and happy to help you do that as well if you are not comfortable doing that. All right, any questions so far? If not, we're gonna dive into the directory and just take a quick look at that. So I clicked on this directory channel here, and you have the ability to view your directory at the unit level, or you can view the directory at your campus level. 
Okay. Now, if you are going to be moving residents in and out of rooms, we definitely recommend that you do that at the unit level. So I'm actually going to go back to my Hoosier Homestead AL section of campus. And we would simply click on a vacant room to move a new resident in. I have two options. I can select an existing resident, which would bring up a list of all of my residents, or I can create a new resident here. So we can add a new name. We can add a phone number if you're hoping to send notifications. Then we would click Save. And we are now gonna see that Robin Jones has been assigned to room 102. On this page, I also have the ability to download the family handout. So this is the handout that has Robin's email address at the top. You do have this option now in LifeShare as well. And here is where you would create a family manager. So you would enter first and last name and the email address that person wishes to use in order to manage their loved one's account if you do have in-room life share on your campus. Now, if not, if you don't have in-room life share, then you can actually go to directory and you can add residents right here. So they don't have to be affiliated with a room. We can click that add button and you can add your new resident accounts there. If you are a campus that has in-room life share, you do have the ability to click in on a resident's account and you are able to manage their in-room life share account by adding some pictures, uh, setting appointments that are specific to that resident, uh, and a few other options there as well. In order to create a staff account, I'll show you how to do that, I'm going to go back home going to go back to the campus level because typically when creating a staff account that is done at the campus level, unless it's somebody that maybe is only going to have rights to memory care. So we're going to click on our campus level. We're going to go back to directory and this time we're going to choose the staff button and from here you would simply click new staff, enter their first name, last name, email address and then you can choose the toggles that you wish them to have access to. So we want this person to be able to manage our community share slideshow. I also want them to be able to work with rooms, residents, and staff. So I would choose the top two. You could add this one if you want them to be able to contact them through the mobile app. And then you would click save and that new staff member account would be saved and they would receive a welcome to LifeShare email. So that was a quick look at LifeShare 2.0. We are so excited for you all to get started. I hope that you found this helpful today. I hope that you found it easy and not that different than what you're already used to, uh, just with some fresh new updates. So if you have any questions at all, we'll stay on for just about another minute. Feel free to pop those in the chat box, or as always, you are welcome to contact us at support at lifesharetech.com, and we would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have throughout this process. We are here to help you, and we wanna make it as easy as possible, and we can't wait to get started. So thank you again for your time. You are free to hop off. We'll hang out for just a minute, um, and again, feel free to contact us with any further questions. Thank you.